Hey everybody, welcome back to the Honestly Adoption Podcast. Welcome to our YouTube audience uh, or our blog, or if you're watching this through our blog, welcome, welcome. It's good to have you here. We told you several weeks ago that we were adding uh, the YouTube co uh, component to this, and we're excited to do this. It's been really fun to do this and uh, be able to connect with you guys. You get to see us um, face to face and kind of how we put these episodes together and produce these episodes. This is season 13. And we're in episode uh, 107. 107. Um, my name is Mike Barry. I got it first time. Great. Yeah. Hey, good job. Introduce yourself. Uh, I introduced myself. <laughs> I, I was on the struggle bus for a couple of uh, weeks with that. So Kristen Barry over there. Nicole Jurgis next to her. Producer Matt over here. This is The Crew. And we're excited to connect with you guys. And today we're, we're continuing our, uh, our uh, series on disobedience and we're asking this question is it disobedience or something else and in this first one we are talking about i totally drew a blank on what we're talking about in this very first episode is it disobedience or sensory sensory is it disobedience or sensory issues right so do we have yeah. a sensory seeker or a sensory avoider gotcha awesome I agree. all right we're going to get this show started here in a moment so pause how are we doing this again We're yeah pausing. Um, i'm gonna drop my mic out and then okay. we'll just pause for three seconds and then we'll do you can do one of two things you can do another intro for the podcast or we can do that separately again yeah you know what actually uh a, cu a couple of episodes ago i thought it was kind of odd that i went from the introduction and all of a sudden i was like hey welcome to the honestly adoption podcast so i'm not going to do that anymore i'm just going to say all right today we're talking about i think i may make a a reference about summer break Huh. How we all create we all crazy now right yeah right? i barely made it here right. okay. so you so you don't want to do another a separate intro i'll or do, do a separate intro but this time this i'm just going to start gonna in. in yeah okay. i'm just going to jump Great. into it all right so. um i'll drop my mic out and okay. then we are ready to go We're and we continue to roll one through that video wise yeah okay yeah. cool just checking youtube gets to see it all <clears throat> see so it all baby yeah you get the you get the crazy behind the behind the scenes you stuff. actually get more through youtube than you do yeah when you're listening so yeah yeah there you go, so, YouTube. All right, guys. Here all we right, go. we are good for the podcast in three, two. So today we're talking about uh, sensory issues. Is it disobedience or sensory issues? And I have a sensory issue right now, and that is it's summer break. And we like most of the world is celebrating. <laughs> we're like, no. <clears throat> yeah, I saw God several help us. Facebook posts of moms who are so excited that their kids are home from school and they've got all these great plans and yeah. I'm like oh, <laughs> it must be nice to be that mom that's so excited to have I, some break. I wanted to send I want to send an email back to the schools and say summer break huh thank you for sending me to hell <laughs> I'm sure that they feel the same way when we yeah. bring our when we bring our kids back <laughs> in the fall <laughs> at least we won't have phone calls yeah. During the day, like from, you know, like that's from always the school from the school interrupting our day. <laughs> um, so that's nice. And we won't have to fight over homework. That's nice. Um, we don't have to get up and get ready to go to school in the that's morning. That's true. Yeah. So And my know. kids sleep in. <clears throat> our kids sleep yeah, in. Yeah. Mine too. Except for one. But she's fine. She can go in the other room. So Take your fine. iPad and entertain yourself for a right. while, right? Right. Just for I, a while. I think that's a really good transition to sensory. Yeah. So, because we will have a good summer with our kids. We will, yeah. But what is it that causes some of this behavior that I think is causing the teachers to say goodbye and cheer a little <laughs> when <laughs> ours are not in their classroom all day? You know, mm -hmm. and it's the things like, um, you know, a child who has a flailing body but seems to not know where their body is in space mm -hmm. or uh, the child who's tapping on the desk all the time or spinning. Um, could even be the child who um, is covering their ears, can't stay focused in class. Mm -hmm. We're about to see that at home 24 hours a day during mm -hmm. the summer. That child that could bounce on the trampoline for four hours straight and still come inside. With full energy. Right. So When I'm about to die because I've been on the trampoline for five minutes. And, and I'm like last night I was on the trampoline for all of five minutes and my entire body was in pain. Yeah. That's also being in my 40s. I was going to say, that's, that's not... because you're old. <laughs> <laughs> that's 40, so, yeah. <coughs> Anyways. That says more about us. I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
We're the we're like the squirrel in this equation, and Kristen is like the the it's a good fox. Thing she like, leads this focused man. It's a good yeah. thing, yeah. Good thing we follow her. All right, Kristen. I hate the addition of a camera because <laughs> she's giving us the look. <laughs> I can, you can't see it though. I mean, I can see it. <laughs> you should give you should give the look to the camera. to the camera just for the YouTube audience. I have literally three hours before my kids are out of school for the summer, so it's true. I would like to know where you want to go with this Let's podcast. go for it. Let's just keep going. Let's keep talking. This is good stuff. Well, because, you know, when we talk about this, I think sometimes it's really easy to get frustrated with our kids, but we don't realize, like, we all have sensory issues, but yeah. we've just learned to adapt to them better, I guess, than our than our kids have. And we're not always on that simmer spot that we've talked about a mm-hmm. lot yeah. to where just a little bit of something sets us over the edge and now we're you know, we're, we're really struggling with life. That's a good point because I, we've talked about this before that everybody has need, has, has a need for sensory input. Mm -hmm. We all do. We all, we all have, we're all in these bodies that have, you know, um, feelings and, um, senses and and nerves and mm -hmm. all that. So that's a really good foundation, uh, to, it's kind of like we talked about several weeks ago when we were talking about, um, survival. That we all are in that place where we need, where we have needs. Mm-hmm. You know, now our children who have trauma histories and and their and healthy attachment things like healthy attachment and you know regulation and logical thinking has all been disrupted because of trauma history. It we we have this foundation where we can all put ourselves in some in a, in our in those shoes and say, okay, this is I understand how this makes sense for me right. and what I need. And now, as I'm putting my children in this place, I can understand this is why it's so much greater for them, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Because, you know, we're so different in that and and what we need. And it's just kind of, I guess that's why I can understand my kids' sensory needs more than I can other things. Because I am so, like, I I hate overhead lights. Like, this right now is taking a lot of work for me to keep everything calm and not be ramped up because I hate overhead lighting. Yeah. It's weird. Um, I'm also not in my gray sweatshirt or gray sweater because I wore it yesterday to all the doctor's appointments I had for my kids. So I'm without my security blanket. So, you know, that's another place where I feel exposed. So lots of different things um, that we have our kids are dealing with. So we have, uh, the, you know, I'm looking through some of our notes that we're going to cover, um, and there's some examples. I think we need to start there with some examples of, um, how what would you call them, sensory needs? Well, uh, I think yeah. first we were starting with, you know, what are some of the signs or symptoms that a child is dealing with a sensory disorder? Um, and so these things can often look like uh, disobedience. So we have a child that's in class that's tapping the table, that's tapping the floor, that's wiggling in a seat, that's falling off the chair. That looks like a child who's choosing not to participate in class. However, that child may be a sensory seeker. Um, What about the child that is talking so loud, that would be me, talking so loud over top of everybody else? That child may be an auditory learner and needs to hear, needs to hear the words the teacher is saying, needs to hear themselves think about a concept out loud. Mm -hmm. Um, What about the kid who is um, bumping into people? So, you know, again, we're talking about school, but we can see this at home as well. We have a big family, so it's kind of like being in a school. You have that child that's body is bumping into the wall, bumping into his brother, bumping into the table and knocking things over. Um, this child may not know where their body is in mm-hmm. space. Mm. So these things can look like, what a frustrating kid. That kid is always in the hallway bumping into people. Mm-hmm. I think he's just Or getting into fights because a lot of times yes. the teacher doesn't see that this kid has bumped into someone. And the next thing you know, someone said, hey, watch out. Yeah. Well, now our kids are triggered and they're mm-hmm. like, I didn't do anything. Yeah. and Because they may not right. have even felt their body. And they may child. not even feel... Um, 
you know, that type of a sensory seeker may not even feel the impact of that other child punching them. Yeah. Sometimes those things need to be so heightened because our child can't feel where his or her body is in space. Now, we're doing a lot of sensory seeking ones. What about the kid who's chewing things and you're saying, yeah. you know, I just bought you that shirt. Please do not chew oh a my hole gosh. through it. Mm-hmm. Every, it <clears throat> seems like every time we have new clothes, um, it, the, the collar right here. Oh, has my like God. A wet, and, or the sleeve, yeah. Now, for me, and this may be my own sensory issues, when I go into a public place, I don't touch anything. I, when I'm shopping for something, you I don't touch, touch anything. Everything. Now, <laughs> you guys do. I touch everything. So there you go. There's the sensory. But we have kids who they cannot stop. And I've kind of given up on the whole, we're not going to touch anything. Mm-hmm. They touch everything. And for the longest time, I didn't realize that that is, that is, a, that is the need for input. Mm-hmm. Well, and so we, we want to take, I want to make sure we, we talk about some of the sensory avoidance first. Yeah. It's harder to see and harder to talk about, yeah. Right. We may have the child who is freaking out because we are behind on laundry and that pair of joggers is just, it didn't make it back into the laundry and all that's left are a pair of jeans. So that child is now melting down, hardcore, freaking out, not going to school. That looks like disobedience. You want to say to your child, suck it up, dude. You've got jeans. That's all you have. Now, your child may have to wear jeans because guess what? We live in the real world and some things, you know, aren't going to work out for us. But we have maybe that sensory avoider who can't stand the way the button feels on those jeans or Mm -hmm. can't stand if pants are touching his ankles. That's one of ours. Cannot stand it. So we may have that sensory avoider that... um, can't stand the sound in the classroom or um, can't stand the overhead lights or can't stand, um, you know, too much visual input. Oh, that yeah. would be me. I can't um, stand it. I need it all to just be peaceful. We go to Chili's so, and they have that table that's like already has the design. It's a pretty design. It already has a design. Mm-hmm. And then they put all of their little things out that says, you know, what their specials are. And then they have that God awful TV thing that yes. sits in the middle. Oh, I hate and that. And we will go, Kristen and I will go out and we will gather everything and put it to the side. <laughs> like, like, I don't need that. We just. Which triggers every waitress in the place, too, because maybe, they have set all that up. But we maybe like not. just take everything and we move it to yeah. the side and like we can ignore it. But, you know, I think of my kids who go in there and who sometimes can't ignore things the way that we can. And you can kind of understand where your kids are coming from in those overly sensory things it's it's right. kind of it's overwhelming for me and i'm yeah i'm an adult yeah well and so i think that's exactly where we need to um, begin to change our perspective with our children think about your five senses what are the things that really bother you mm-hmm. what are the things you really can't tolerate what are the things that you really love so mm-hmm. you may be a very visual person you may love all the colors and sights you may love all the talking, all the sounds, all, or you may really despise that and find it very difficult to concentrate. Yeah. So look at yourself first. As you begin to understand yourself, it's a lot easier to step back and investigate what's happening with our kids. Mm-hmm. And that really is the first step. When we realize we have something that looks like disobedient behavior. We have a kid who's refusing to put jeans on. We have the kid who is bumping into walls. We have the kid who's spinning constantly. Um, We have the kid who is turning every light on or turning every light off. Um, And we have these children who are doing something that may seem, um, you know, to press against the culture that's that's happening. Mm -hmm. They're pushing against what the teacher has done in the classroom. They're pushing against what we're asking them to do, you know, around the dinner table or something. This may look like disobedience, but as parents, if we can look at those five senses, first understand ourselves, then we can begin to investigate what's yeah. happening before this, quote, disobedient behavior. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Instantly. so what are some things we can look into? Oh, my goodness. There are so many things. And This does seem like an overwhelming topic, especially when you think about it from your own family's perspective. Because your five senses are always yeah. working. Trying to manage us, but then also manage these little people. Mm-hmm. Who ha- who may have a trauma history, and that so that is to put all of their sensory needs in a tailspin. Right, but once you know that, here's the thing: you can do a lot of stuff before it happens. Yeah, um, you know, we just went through this with our son 
going on a field trip. And we were like, yeah, no, he's not going to do well on that field trip. And I am not going to have him go there and come home sensory overloaded for five days and having behavior after that. Yeah. So, you know, before he would have went on this field trip, would have come home and we would have had a crazy week following that. Yeah. Probably sent home, probably grounded, whatever that would have looked like for him. But. When they brought out the those are those are my kids in the background. Yeah, probably I think we leaving. picked that we picked that up. <laughs> That's my loud talker. <laughs> Her kids are already out of school. <laughs> Yay! It's the honestly adoption podcast, so it, it would it's make fine. sense for a, a <laughs> one of our kids to be in it. She was happily going outside, so just that that loudness was at least a happy loud. So it wasn't a someone screaming in the background. So that's good. Um, we knew that this field trip going to an arcade. Why? I know why. Because it's their last year in their elementary school and they're going on. So yay fun. Yeah. Um, you put them on a bus, which is overwhelming for my child. It's loud. Um, you can hear everything going on. And then you've got um, people touching him and mm-hmm. him touching other people. Um, and it's going to be hot on a bus. So like a lot of those different things you've already got going on in the bus. Mm-hmm. Then you get there. We don't let my son play video games. He just can't. It's almost like jacking him up on something. Right. He just does not come down well from it. Um, we have to, we have to, he's allowed to play, but it's very limited. So they were going to go to a place that had video games all over the place. And that's what they were going to do for the entire time that they were there. No, he can't handle mm-hmm. that. Yeah. That's yeah. sensory overload for him. Yeah. Um, and so we avoided that whole thing, had a great day doing something else with his grandparents who spoiled him rotten, going to see cars, which he loves. Um, it wasn't like he stayed home that day. He got to go to like a Meekum auction, mm-hmm. which is really cool for my son who loves cars. On the way here, he we named it. every oh car gosh. on the way here. He made my sons jealous because they were showing pictures of, the, of him standing next to like McCl- a McLaren and... Mm-hmm. Lamborghini and my kids. That's like crack Did you cocaine see for my, his video my son. Of his ride in the Dodge Charger with my parents. Mm-mm. It's no. really funny. <laughs> like my dad is like holding on for dear life, and my dad, you know, he's not afraid. He's totally not yeah, yeah. afraid. <laughs> but you could see the look on his face. You're terrified. <laughs> no, like he's like holding on for dear life. Yeah, it was going really fast, and Austin's back there, like just enjoying the entire time. Yeah, but that's not. Since that, that won't set him over sensory. That was a very short time where he got to do that. Yes, he was around lots of other people, yeah. but he had grandparents who were there mm-hmm. to help him handle that sensory issue. Um, I know you've got some sensory avoid. I've I've only got oh. one sensory avoider. I do have some sensory avoiders, but I want to go back to your story because I think it walks us through exactly what we need to do as parents. When we first, when we see a situation and we say what. What is causing this behavior? We're going to investigate. So when is the child struggling? What's Mm -hmm. happening in the environment around the child? Well, what happened with your son is that you see this paper come home for a field trip, and you've already done the investigation. Mm -hmm. And so you go through that step by step. I already know that my child gets overstimulated by video games. I already know that my child gets overstimulated on a school bus. I already know that the anticipation of an event like that is overstimulating. And I know that once my child has gotten that overstimulated, we may be looking at two, three days. And this was literally the conversation Nicole and I had leading up to this field trip. She called and said, I can't do this. If he goes on this field trip, we're looking at a weekend of meltdowns. Mm -hmm. So she'd already done the investigation. I know which situations trigger my child. So secondly, once we've done the investigating, we've got to start thinking outside the box. So what can we do instead? In her situation, she addressed each of those things that are going to set her child up for failure, and she replaced them with something else. Riding on a school bus? That's not going to work. Ah, yeah. riding in the car with Momo and Pappy? That's going to work. Going to an arcade? That's not going to work. Going to a car show with Momo and Pappy? Guys, if you don't know Momo and Pappy, <laughs> get to know. Everybody wants to go to Everybody a car show wa- with them. I'd, I'd go anywhere with Momo and Pappy. <laughs> so, and if you go to Lowe's with Pappy, <laughs> you will learn a lot. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, He's an experience. Smart. He's smart. replacing each one of those triggers 
with something that's more appropriate. Mm -hmm. We as parents are the ones that have to do the investigating first. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the last things, and most importantly, uh, that we're going to do in each one of these steps as we talk about what, what is disobedient behavior and what is really something else. It's always something else. Yeah. Okay. And so we know how, we're raising adults, and we want them to be able to do this for themselves. Mm -hmm. So once we have investigated, once we've come up with these outside-of-the-box solutions, we want to pass them on to our kids. So um, our son was really ramped up by the amount of chaos in his third-grade classroom. Oh, end of the school year is like... Oh why, my gosh. Why do we send our kids? It's, it's a disaster. It is. Can't do it. Mm -hmm. And this had been going on most of the year. Yeah. And when we called the teacher, we said, you know what we do at home? We know, again, we run a small school in our house. When we get in the car, this child puts on a pair of noise canceling headphones. He'll wear them around the house, he wears them in the car. The teacher's response at first was, he's the loudest one in the class. And I said, I know, because... <laughs> also the loudest one in our home. <laughs> right. But as that chaos goes up, his voice goes up, his behaviors go up, his body feels out of control. So we started sending him to school with noise-canceling headphones. The ones we had weren't great, and so once the school saw that this was actually a pretty good thing, the school actually purchased him a pair of better noise-canceling headphones. That's awesome. So thinking outside of the box. So we've investigated. We've come up with a different solution. Now we pass it on to our children. So we don't ever keep these things from our kids. No. So it's not, Austin, why can't you go to the arcade? It's, hey, bud, can we can we talk through what the arcade is like? Mm-hmm. It's, it's a little, it's a lot of lights, it's a lot of sound, it's a lot of riding on the bus. How do you feel when you're there? Oh, I feel out of control. And then what happens? Well, then I end up getting in trouble and I have to, the principal has to come. Or, I've got, or they've got to call you, my, Mom. Right, I'm in my room all week. I don't want that. Well, hey, here's what I'm thinking. Mama and Pappy would love to go to the car show. Oh, they loved it. What do you think about that? Now, we're passing on the responsibility to our child. The same with the noise-canceling headphones. Hey, kiddo, seems like you're getting in a lot of trouble at school. I know that you have trouble when it gets too loud in the classroom. What do you think you could do? We'd already decided we're sending him with the noise-canceling headphones, but we're offering it to him. Let's talk about how you're feeling when your voice gets super loud. Well, I can't hear the teacher, and I can't hear myself, and I'm really, really frustrated. I know. What's something you do at home? Well, I like to take my headphones. Cool. Would you like a pair for school? Yes. I mean, good, because I already ordered them and they're on their way on Amazon Prime. <laughs> and you have no choice. You're going <laughs> right. to take taking them to school. You are going to take them. <laughs> but remembering right. that he may always have trouble with that. Yeah. And that's okay. I can't stand the noise. I really understand this child. Yes. So I'm thinking, well, as an adult, I don't put myself places where there's going to be chaos. Nope, you sure don't. So... He is going to potentially always struggle with that. But can he carry a pair of noise-canceling headphones? Mm -hmm. He sure can. Can he put his hoodie up over his head? So we're thinking outside the box, and then we're going to pass this on to our kids. So we wrote down a couple things that we do mm -hmm. with our kids. Um, fidgets. Oh, yeah. Your teachers may hate this, so go in and talk to the teacher. Find some fidget that, that your child can take that don't disrupt the class. The Rubik's Cube has become the new fidget for my kids. And I'm like, well, you're learning something there, right? I mean, mm -hmm. they haven't solved it yet, but hey, whatever. I it's fine. I understand that. That would make <clears throat> me more frustrated than it, calm. It, me too. But that's okay. <laughs> that's them. Uh, we talked about headphones. Clothing. Oh, yeah. Now, remembering that, we're passing this on to our kids. So my child that can't have the pants that touch his shoes, if you've listened to this podcast or you read our stuff, you're going to know. We have a child whose pants cannot touch his ankles or shoes. Can't. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a full-blown meltdown. It is when it not does, okay. When, it, when he does. However, he doesn't melt down anymore. Why? He learned to cuff his pants when he was in preschool. Learned yep. to do it himself. It was worth taking the time to say, I see that this is really frustrating you. What can we do with these pants? Mm -hmm. You oh. would never know, looking at him now, that he has to wear a certain type right. of clothing. Right. Because you know he what? can pick it out himself. And, exactly. And he can of, adjust it himself. Right. So he can handle this. He's going to be an adult that if this still bothers him, 
he's going to figure out what to do yeah. with his pants. Right. And I think I that need. I, speaking of this child in particular, that's a great example of how, you know, we've talked throughout this podcast series about consistency, and especially when it comes to behaviors and behavior management. But that is a child that we've often said this when we teach live and, and you know, at conferences, using this child as an example, that when we first brought this child into our home, he was... Um, I mean, meltdown, meltdown. He, Kristen, Kristen couldn't put him, him down. Yeah. yeah. You know, she would get into the worship center after the service started, and the moving lights would trigger him. And um, you wouldn't know, as we as we tell that story of his early childhood, looking at him now, you'd never know that that no. was the child we were talking about. No. And you would never know proof. that he's coping all exactly, the time. Exactly, yeah. Which shows you that that consistency mm -hmm. is a game changer when it comes to these strategies that we've been talking through in this series. Right. And the way that you do that, too, is sometimes there's things you can't avoid. Mm -hmm. I can't avoid overhead lights. It's going to be there. I can't avoid some certain things. Yeah. But what you did was slowly expose him to things at a level he could handle mm -hmm. it for a time period that he could handle it and then took him back out. And it was a slow go. It was mm -hmm. like years oh my gosh. of work that you'd put but into that. That was with a therapist that talked us through, I want you to go to the church parking lot, and that's all. I want you to go to the church lobby when no one's there, and that's all. Now I want you to go into the worship area with no one there, and that's all. It was this 450-step process to get mm -hmm. our child to go into a church when church was happening. Mm -hmm. I'm really glad we did that. He was pretty little at the time because um, church was important. Church is important. Church was important to us at the time because we worked in a church. We really couldn't just <laughs> right. avoid going to church. Right. So we did it for that reason. But here's what we know now. He can walk into the school even when other kids are walking in. Now, he will actually ask to sit in the car until 7.58 because at 7.58, they open the doors, and there's not a crowd of people. Yeah. That's knowing yourself. Now, can he do it? Yes. Yeah. He could do it. Mm -hmm. In fact, this morning, he walked up with the crowd of people. I don't know what that this was all morning, about. This morning, he asked to go through the line right. to be dropped That's off. That's never happened. That's really strange. But as we taking those baby steps... That's actually leading us up to being able to do more later. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we know um, if our child has a sensory processing disorder, this is something that we can get a diagnosis for. It's pretty hard, yeah. and, it and it's it's pretty uh, misunderstood at this point. So if you feel like you have a pediatrician that can help you with this, um, you can ask for a referral to an occupational therapist. We would absolutely suggest that. It is highly possible that your insurance will tell you they can't pay for it. Uh, that was our story with every kid. We know they have sensory needs. We could not get any help. But do it if you can. Some of this is becoming more um, understood, and uh -huh. so it's possible. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's where, you know, you introduced me to a lot of resources, um, that helped because we could not get a diagnosis, but I know some things are going on. And I know this because I know myself and I'm looking mm -hmm. at my kids seeing the same thing. So there are research. The great thing is, is we have this great thing called the internet and you can look everything up now and you have a great website that you introduced me to. And it even helps like with older kids, because a lot of times yes. you get like the younger kids and you forget like... If these things aren't resolved when they're little, you didn't figure it out when they were little, or you have a child coming to you as an older child, there's still some sensory stuff. And this website is great. Um, and it helped with our even our teenager. Mm -hmm. Is that understood.org? Understood.org. Um, they're getting a lot of uh, airtime from us right now because they have a lot of great yeah. resources. Yeah. Why reinvent the wheel? Go to understood.org. They have lots of ideas for how to help your child um, function with sensory processing disorder, how to function with executive processing disorder, all kinds of well, things. Well, and to help you see what's going on, if you're noticing a problem, they also are like, hey, this is why you could be seeing that problem, and here are some things that can help. Absolutely. So we'd say check that out. Um, we also want to say check out capable.com. Yep. Uh, they sell the best weighted products. Uh, our kids have their weighted blanket, their weighted everything Chris, i don't Kristen even know uses all their weight i products. have their weight i'll come products. over to her house and she'll i've got one on my head <laughs> yeah. or on her shoulders we, should have, her we should have had that in here for the for everybody <laughs> totally watching on youtube have. i wish yeah. i would have thought of that yeah um check out capable.com yeah awesome 
Awesome. Yeah, great. This has been a great discussion, um, and we will put both links to both uh, sites that we just mentioned in the notes on the blog um, that you can you can check out there. Um, yeah, this has been awesome. Those of you that are watching through YouTube, thanks for joining us for this this week's episode, uh, or you're watching this through our blog. Um, this has been this is season thirteen, episode one hundred seven. One thing I do want to mention, uh, and we said this in you heard us you've heard us say this throughout the show, beginning of the show. Uh, that right now we have a free video series available called Transform Your Journey, How Understanding Trauma Can Change Your Family. Um, we started, we launched it a couple of days ago, but you can still catch up um, right now by jumping over to transformyourjourney.org. Sign up for it. Uh, it's completely free, free download. Uh, and we walk through um, some key principles that we've been talking about in this series, um, simple understanding of trauma, uh, behavior understanding and management, and then um, also uh, just the, kind of the the the, ad, the need for advocacy too, all included in this video series. So, um, and and again, if you haven't done so already, um, jump over to honestlyadoption.com, which is our podcast website. Um, browse some of our past resources. You can actually find links to everything we've talked about through this this episode over at honestlyadoption.com. Thank you guys again for joining us, and we will see you next time on the Honestly Adoption Podcast.